right into it, huh? So, um, this was a build around submission for uh, kind of a meme more than anything. The person that submitted it requested it be called Boat Bros. I've been I'm gonna go with Boat Control. Basically, Leviathan is a boat that gets played pretty frequently because it's very powerful. Five eight for eight. Overwhelm deals one damage three times the enemy nexus. When you play it, you draw a Swain. And then this helps level Swain. And then when Swain is leveled, it stuns everything in their back row. And while Leviathan Swain sees a lot of play, there's also other boats in this game that also draw champions. So this build around request was Leviathan plus Swain, as well as Dreadway plus Gangplank. So Dreadway, nine cost fearsome, four, eight. Doubles all damage your stuff deals and draws you Mr. Gangplank when it comes into play. So, the rest of this shell is cheap units to play to the board, as well as some damage-based interaction to help level up Swain. We've got some things like Culling Strike and Scorched Earth as well. So, kind of sweeperless control in a way. But Swain Leviathan can help lock down bigger boards in the late game. And we have do have some things like Scorched Earth and Calling Strike at least to kill things that have, have bigger stats. So let's go ahead and dive on into a few games here with this and see if this is at all, at all reasonable. Fervor's probably pretty good here. I think I'm gonna mulligan. Do I even mulligan the gangplank? It might be right just to keep him for for just like his stat line later. I think I'm actually gonna keep all of these. I see some folks using the YouTube command in chat. I have I had some I've I've had good feedback in general on the highlights channel, but I have um, started a second channel that will house just highlights moving forward. So if you enjoy those slightly shorter, more condensed best of the best decks that I play on stream, you'll want to subscribe to that second channel. All of all of those specific videos will be up there moving forward. Ninja Wizards, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. For oh, gold, I listen. I think I'm pretty okay running these into either of these. Let's just attack. What's the best counter to pirate aggro? Um, actually. A lot of... So, one of the things that Runeterra does really well is that Runeterra doesn't have a lot of, a lot of hard counter style decks and matchups. There tends to be a good amount of play in most matchups that you're gonna you're gonna experience. The Oratog, thank you for the two and a half years. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Like a fish in water. <laughs> to who? Last night, I had a blast with Go Easy against the Navia Harring. Every time they went to Harrowing, I had pack your bags to clean up, and then enough interaction to clean up the eggs. Nice. I'm pretty okay with this trade here, I think, so I'm going to go ahead and offer it. What I think is the major draw of Runeterra over other card games right now? I think the core gameplay in Runeterra is better than the core gameplay in other card games. I think Rune Terra is the most recent card game to have released in terms of the major players, and that shows in the fact that they it really it really feels like they've learned from mistakes the other card games have made over the years. Also, the amount of polish the game has in terms of look and feel of the game, this is subjective, but I think it's the most beautiful card game that exists. Um 
the 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 thing the thing it really does a bit different than a lot of other card games is the voice lines and stuff and the way the cards interact with each other on board the game feels way more alive than any other card game i've ever played and that yeah and that's even before you get into the economy i i honestly don't like to hammer the economy because like I think I think all other things equal, Rune Terra stands well on its own, even not considering the fact that its economy is really well done. It's gonna go ahead and tell these things to get flocked here, I think. The fact the fact that it isn't a predatory pile of garbage is also very appealing, though, yes. Swain's gonna be nice and leveled here. And then in a pretty good spot here, we're at 13 and opponents down to two cards in hand. I agree, Lampton. All all other things equal. Even even if Magic or Hearthstone or these other games made their economies more consumer friendly, I I genuinely think Rune Terror is just a better game in terms of gameplay. That's terrifying because it means that if they have a piece of direct damage next turn, they get to level Gangplank. Hang them by their entrails. Know your place. Pretty sure we're obligated to block here. Destination in sight. Bring these lads. Warmason, reporting for duty. Make the Empire proud. I am reborn of salt and pride. I think I'm supposed to just kill this. This is going to level regardless. It doesn't have to see it. In, in my opinion, Rune Terra's best... In my opinion, Rune Terra's worst constructed formats are comparable to Magic's best formats. Like, there's a actually just that much of a difference between them. Well, if this doesn't kill us, they should be very dead to our to our boats here. Who's active for action? They ain't blocked there, and they still go to negative seven because everything's doubled up. I'm on a boat! The Navy is here, and we're taking out the trash. Borean, thanks for the follow. I am the Magic Moose chat. There's a Magic Moose among us. Welcome, folks. Target dummy for the mods. Thank you for the 10 months of Prime. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I mean, our deck is playing a bunch of good cards. Like, Swain mid-range with, with Bilgewater as a second region is just a lot of good Rune Terror cards. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Lampton. The vet, so like, I know a lot of people talk about how they prefer best of three for tournament modes, and while I agree with that, Rune Terra has little enough variance, and the fact that you see their decks and get to make intelligent mulliganing decisions game one, knowing just their region to their champions, means that best of one in Rune Terra feels better than best of one in almost any other game. Oh, I should put I should put spoilers in the stream title. That's a good that's a good comment. Do I have uh in addition, in addition to having a daily deck highlight on my highlights channel, during spoiler season, that channel will have two videos per day, and the second video will always, um, will be, uh, spoiler content every single day. So, we'll be getting new cards in about 45 minutes again today, is the expectation, and we'll look at them live on stream, and then the, that, that segment will go up on the YouTube channel as a highlight as well. So every, every single day that playlist will get updated.
Yeah, bro broke it. Deck confirmed busted. Hey, Shankimus Prime. I know there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for shipping your Bezo bucks this way this month and keeping me in play. Wouldn't be here without folks like you. Thanks for the support. Yeah, hopefully we get hopefully we get a champion's builder today. Twisted Elise. So Scorched Star is actually pretty bad here. They don't tend to have too many large units that get damaged. Fortune Croaker is a fine early blocker. I think I'm only getting the rest of these looking for just other cheap curve plays. Red Link! Thank you for the very generous tier two. I appreciate the 23 months. Welcome back. Nothing but the stink of blood and sweat. Let's get to Morning, Bizzle. By the way, Red Link, I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, tier two subs, as an extra thank you, do get to bump a deck in the deck queue every month when they renew. So there's a bunch of Runeterra decks in there since I, I shifted to $10 submission. So if you want to take a peek, and bump anything up in there to see it a bit sooner, let me know. You can just drop me a DM, either here or on Discord. For silver, I talk. For gold, oh, I nice. Listen. It's actually not terrible. It means I get to... Oh, I should have attacked. That attack was attack was free. Mostly. Mostly free. Oh. Interesting. That's... That's troublesome. Yeah, this is this is not a card that maybe they're not go hard, or maybe they're go hard that's just playing on dying. Hey, monster! Thanks for the two years. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. Good morning. for four here. Hopefully we can just race them. We have uh, Zap into Gangplank here. Yeah, and actually, it's likely likely a deck that has fewer Elise, or it's guaranteed a deck that has fewer Elise. It's worth noting here that Elise is after Twisted Fate, and we know this means they have fewer Elise because if they're the same number of both of these champions, they're arranged in order of, of cost. So because the two cost is to the right of the four cost, there's fewer Elise in my opponent's deck than there are Twisted Fate. Obviously could be 3-2 or 2-1 technically, but it's good to, good to note. McNox, thank you for the 20 months. I really appreciate it. Welcome back. Sounds good, Hank. I'll get that bumped up after we're done today. RNLR, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Who's on top of the bounty board today? That's uh, that's unfortunate. They get to run there, undying into this now. There's not much we can do about it. I rarely forget. I never forget. That's why we respect you, Captain. <laughs> Woo Time to make some coin. Yeah, yeah, Death Sanding, this makes things vulnerable permanently, so there's really not a point in Death Sanding there. I'm gonna go ahead and parlay plus flock this. Just so I have good, so I have good open attacks next turn. So I think we're definitely in a position where we want to be racing here. Hey to Albatross. Thanks for thanks for helping me stay here with Runeterra. I really appreciate the third of year. Welcome back. I agree. I'm much happier having switched to Runeterra as my primary card game. This game is lovely. Code for the deck approved overnight. Do you think it's something better for a strike or archer? Feel free to swap them. Sounds good, Griffin. Thanks for the tip. I'll get that out of the deck key when I'm done today. You've concerns, do ya? So they have an Undying coming back as a 3-3 here, but we have open attacks for 9. Which that, combined with like Death Sand plus Zap here, hopefully drawing us some reach. And then Boat is a top end. 
Remember, this this comes back, but it can't block notably, so. We have a really solid attack here. That's unfortunate. Nice, Caracol. Yeah, the invoke control deck's really good. For, for sure. Okay, Fervor is not a terrible pickup. I'm going to wait. How much mana do I have? I have six. I'm only have seven next turn. All right, let's do this. And then I'm going to wait to Death's Hand because Death's Handing on their turn will give Gangplank an extra point towards leveling, which is good. Perfect. And now I can Death's Hand this plus play Swain this turn. Depending on what they do, it could also be right to Death Sand their Fearsome Blocker since Swain's going to be coming down and he's going to be leveled from the Death Sand. Get bloody, get paid. Born a patrician, I became a soldier. And the next turn, we're going to be able to drop Leviathan, which is great. There's a good chance that, like, my opponent doesn't have a lot of blockers for this. So I, th I think I'm just going to go ahead and jump here. And then Death Sand here. And then just take this too. This forces them to have another way to block this next turn or a way to kill it outright. I have a glimpse here. And even, even if they deal with this, I have enough chump blockers for this in the short term that this boat is going to get me another Swain and it's going to apply a lot of pressure with leveled Swain stunning their stuff. So if you like we're in an okay spot, not 100%, but definitely favored from this spot, I think. Yep, there's the glimpse. Merely pawns in a greater game. What are your thoughts for them putting the cards you're thinking about in the middle? I think it's fine. Do you have another 3 2? That's very good. Okay. No excess when victory is at stake. Nah, I'm just gonna play the boat and pass. The boat the boat's gonna put them to eight and then it's gonna stun these two. Okay, with that play, with that play, I think I go ahead and attack. This can eat one of these, but I have flocks to kill it. And even, even if they can kill this because it's got damage marked on it, I could do this into another Swain here. I have nine mana, so I could technically do this, this, and this. Oh, 
What if I do- what if I do this? This ends with the, uh, the undying stunned? Clipsy, thank you for the 32 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So this, this will kill this. And then this will... Did I just die? Not quite, but close. So they have nine, they can put us to three here. Okay, and then we get to do this and just force them to have, force them to have like a third vengeance here, right? They've played, they've played two vengeance out already. Oh, have they used all three? I was at the third. I think, I think you might be right. I think it might have been three there. Sweet. Sweet game. Garbage, Andy. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. This swing card's pretty good, chat. He's on, on a boat, and he is ready to go. Ready to plow. So he's a pinnacle of good champion. Land. I agree. I agree. He's powerful, but he requires a very specific level up mechanic, so he can't just go into everything. You need to build around him a little bit, and there's a couple different ways to build around him. Love, 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 love it. They keep Scorched Earth here. Seems real good against the Star Spring deck. Get a look at these other two looking for cheaper things. No, spoilers, uh, spoilers usually go up about, uh, about 11 a.m., so about half an hour. Fonsetti, thank you for the 23 months. Welcome back. Yeah, I am just playing a 2-3 out. I don't change fate, but I can see it. I don't think it's strictly fair to make a statement like mid-range is objectively the best way to play a card game, but I do think it's probably fair to say card games are at their best when mid-range is playable. So I neglected to play this, assuming they were going to attack here, because now I can do this and then Scorched Earth her. Getting getting a clean kill in on that while they don't have resources to protect it. It's a big win here for us, I think. This card's also excellent in this matchup, kills both their champions. Now, it is worth noting, I do need to play around Pale Cascade on Mr. Kench here. Maybe they just have a lot of ways to heal their stuff. Hey, Jareths. Thank you for the tier two resub. I really appreciate the 13 months. Welcome back. Is it spider? It's spider or, or gangplank. 
I kind of don't mind playing Gangplank. If they want to try and eat Gangplank, I can just tell him to get flocked. If they want to like spend mana eating my keg, or they're gonna spend mana eating this? Yeah, this seems this seems like a win for us. It's too late now. Yeah, like if I if I manage to kill Kench now, I get a summon effect out of that again, which is great. Get flocked. This could, this could easily be the game here. I think the I think the opponent's play was a little ambitious there. Yeah. I won't stop coming for those who wronged me. Won't stop coming for those who wronged me. Matchup's probably pretty okay for us regardless, especially considering the fact that like we drew um we drew our destroy target damage units and stuff there and calling strikes our deck. The deck might some of the answers in my deck are definitely selected with that that in mind. Like border mean platinum three. Uh diamond, diamond three. The diamond is, has a little bit of a purple hue. Platinum. Platinum's more green. Yeah, they are kind of close in color, though. Honestly, it might be right to keep Fervor here with House Spider. Being able to uh, kill both their champions is good. Yeah, I'll probably, probably get value out of Fervor. I'm gonna Mulligan. Oh, this is another fervor. Um, well, we drew a second house spider, so everything worked out. Definitely thought that was a death sand. <laughs> Should pay more attention. So if they open attacks, we'll death sand this. If they don't open attacks, we'll probably house spider. Doesn't really make sense that they would play this before attacking here. I feel like they should just hit us for two. Success. Get to notice around here. Hey, nice AK. The Diamond 4 rank floor is my home. So if you're able to queue up during the hours that I'm streaming, there's a good chance you find us if you're in in Diamond 4 to 2 in the in the NA shard. It's been a while since we'd used the Slaughter Docks board on stream, but it seemed it seemed fitting to use the Slaughter Docks board the for uh, our boat deck. So we're really hoping to fade crowd favorite here. Card's gonna be real bad for us. Happy to see something other than fearsome and go hard being played. Play too much, too much of those here. Usually, usually try and play different decks every single day and a couple of them at that. Alright, so... Definitely... Noxie and Fervoring here in response, right? This means the 1-1 one, one gets hooked by one of these, but I think that's fine. I've still got two twos to trade into these. 
I just want to keep our legs a little as high as possible here. Yeah, like, this this exchange seems great for us, right? Like, we eat this, we trade here, they eat here, so they have this and this versus our 2-1 plus our hand. And, like, this can trade into this next turn, but, like, that's fine. A fine exchange for us. Our, our deck has better top end at this point, so, like, we have Swains and Gangplank, so they have just mostly weaker units. Like, Jinx is one of their best draws at this point. I still have a backup for Verm. So I think I'm going to be a little bit aggressive here. And I'm going to go ahead and Culling Strike this Draven. Basically just, like, giving them the option to Spinning Axe and discard a card to save him. The tournament, everyone was playing Fearsomes and Go Hard. Did they publish? Did they publish data on the tournament? Or... Wow, that's a pretty big mistake for the opponent there. If they were going to do that anyways. Uh, yeah. And like, yeah, do you have actual data on the tournament? They haven't published data on the tournament yet, right? So I assume you're just doing the typical card game player, my anecdotal evidence is representative sample size thing. I'm not, I'm not actually talking to, I'm not actually talking about meta snapshot. I, it would be nice to specifically see what the breakdown of the tournament deck list was. It, it, I'd be interested to see how much different the tournament metagame was and like what the ladder snapshots look like. Just any, any boat here would be great. I think we're ahead regardless, but any of our top end is what we're looking for. Boats, boats and champions, chat. Boats and champions. We got 11 of those to draw to. Perfect. I'm probably supposed to uh, I'm probably supposed to death sand that. Nah, I'm gonna hold on to the death sand. Let's just hire and gun and kill this. Metaphorical duck. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for the follow. And again, like, we're at 16. We're not in any danger of getting burned out. We've got a bunch of answers at hand. We're we're waiting for one of our bombs to roll off the top of the deck, but why did discarding a card give this guy's plus one? Because they discarded a uh, vision. Which says this gets cast when it gets discarded. Alright, the game is ended. We did it! That's exciting, Jacob. What are you gonna do with your lots of minutes? Play Minecraft Dungeons? You can play Minecraft Dungeons if you would like. Yeah. You want me to load it up for you? Yeah. Get away, get away. Get away, big man. It's okay. Calm down. I can't make him wait. I can't make him wait. Just wait, just wait, just wait. Okay. Wait, people, wait. Wait, people is right. That's okay. Dad can multitask. Dad can load Minecraft Dungeons on the Switch while also playing. Wait, 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 wait. So if we death sand this, we stun this one. Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Wait, it's back. Bye. 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 
The, the RTX does largely filter, Jacob. Okay, okay. Yeah, I what are you doing? I can see it. I can see your butt. <laughs> I'm on a so let's go ahead and death hand this, which then lets Swain stun her, so then we can tell her to flock off. We are playing the boat deck. It's pretty cool. The two greedy just slammed boat and said, Yeah, I think so. The sacrifice must be made. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. With, I agree with Landon. I think this game is difficult for us to lose regardless, but all of the scenarios that involve us losing that game involve Jinx sitting on the board. So I think being conservative with the cards that I have in hand is guaranteed killing Jinx there is definitely the line. I think, I think you could take a more aggressive line there and it would probably still win you the game, but I think it's likely unnecessary risk. I guess the matchup for Noxian Fervor is probably pretty good. What's up, bud? It's a secret mission. You have to play in this level or this level and find the secret mission. I don't know where you have to. You have to just keep playing until you find it. Okay. I don't. I don't know where it's at. You gotta explore every part of those other levels. Yep, it's a, it's a secret. It's outside of this one or this Save one. It's right next to it. We speak with blades. Maybe. Gotta find out. Yep. I think I'm just passing here. I think we just I think we just pass. No, we're just just getting more cards, Fox. So for people that are, are new to Rune Terror, aren't quite familiar with their release cycle schedule, whatever you want to call it. Um they they release um they release cards uh a big set and then two smaller parts of that same set and then right after that they release a uh they release another large set with a new region so the february card drop will be an 80 card set with the new region then there'll be two smaller 40 card sets with that same region again and then there'll be the 10th and final region added uh so february april june uh august august we'll get we'll have all 10 regions So, in a way, Jacob's kind of adorable. Um, he is behind me. I don't know if you can hear him or not, but he's behind me explaining what's going on in Minecraft Dungeons. We can do another Minecraft Dungeons game together later, okay, Jacob, but right now, Daddy has to do the card game, okay? I love you. I promise we will play more Minecraft Dungeons together and make another video. He is, he is very adorable. I think we attack in here. If they block, we can go ahead and Scorched Earth this. It'll be damaged. Their regions usually can't heal. 
This also pushes Gangplank, which is nice. If there's anything about rotation plans for the future... Yeah, they have they have said there will be a... The only thing we know about rotation is that there will be a rotation at some point. We have not we have not been given clarification on what exactly that means. And I also I also think there's probably a very real chance that they don't know what their rotation plans are yet. There's a lot of different ways they could rotate the game. I would I my personal speculation, I've talked about this on stream before is I would be very surprised if rotation happens before we have all 10 regions in the game. So I would, I would, I would bet if, if, or when we rotate, it probably doesn't happen until like spring 2022. Yeah, yeah, they've got, and they, and that's probably smart. They've got a ton of cards to release between now and then, so... I have no idea, Kazoo. Like I said, there's there's literally a ton of different ways they could rotate things. I don't really have any speculation on on how. I will I will say that Rune Terra's had a pretty innovative approaches to most things, and I would be kind of surprised if whatever their rotation strategy is isn't also somewhat innovative. I think I think there's a there's a ton of room for Rune Terra to do rotation and have it be a good experience for their players. So rotation in other games like Hearthstone and Magic sucks for two reasons primarily. The first reason rotation sucks in those other games is because those other games are too goddamn expensive. And the fact that Rune Terra is so consumer friendly and it's so reasonable to get new cards and have a full collection, rotation won't suck for that reason. The other reason rotations tend to suck in other card games is other card games have this huge focus on their rotating format in terms of competitiveness and support. So if Rune Terra does rotate, so long as they have a, a card pool or a format where the entire card pool is legal that has equal support to whatever their rotating format is, that's also not really a big deal. That deck's been really sweet so far. We picked apart a bunch of things. Kuska, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. All right. Elise, Noxious, Shadow Isle, Spiderburn here. It's a little bit since I've played this. This deck, this deck's mostly fallen off in favor of the Fearsome's deck. A mulligan, these two looking for some other cheap units to start. Maybe some Death Sand. Nah, I think equal support would be nice. And again, like, with those other games, you just need to follow the money to understand why those other games don't adequately support their non-rotating formats. Games like Hearthstone and Magic, because their primary monetization is selling loot boxes, random card packs, they have a financial incentive to not support their non-rotating formats as much because their non-rotating formats don't make them nearly as much money. And I think Rune Terra has the chance to be really innovative in these areas and do things differently because their primary monetization method is just different than what these other card games do. What is rotation? So a rotation is what we refer to it in card games as um, when there'll be a format that's like only cards from these certain card sets are legal. Razd Zek, Rad Zek, thanks for the follow. Gremeldin, thanks for the 13 months. I appreciate the prime. Welcome back. They have not formally announced anything. People are just discussing possibilities. Will they rotate the Evo meta? Yep. Asking the big questions. I think I have to fervor here. I don't think I can just take a hit for eight. You wore me down, and I downloaded Rune Terror last night. I've been having a ton of fun. I'm glad. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Totally reasonable. Thanks for the three quarters of a year. Welcome to Rune Terror. The biggest Xander. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna get beat up here. 
The fact that we just got blown out on trying to fervor there probably means we're dead. So, but like, again, the Taikido, what you're describing literally just doesn't happen if the non-rotating format, if the non-rotating format has equal support. It's basically, basically what it comes down to. Nice, press pick. That's a decent, that's a decent pickup here, because it means I can block, and then culling here. We're going to four, probably dead. I guess I could fervor two and keep my health total higher. That's probably the play. Yeah, this is probably the play. This, this keeps us at six, which is still still pretty low. Still a pretty good chance we get burned out from here. Success gets noticed around here. That is a great draw, because it lets us kill this next turn. Never planned to host Runeterra tournaments like I did for Magic. Yeah, I've talked about that a little bit in the past. When Runeterra has either a site like MTG Melee or in-client tournament support available to third parties, I definitely intend to host tournaments. So a big, big part of why I was able to host Magic tournaments was because of the third-party site we had access to. Not my first gunfight. Yeah, I'm actually not sure. Some people have said it's left to right for tiebreakers. I've seen other people say it's random. I'm gonna get decimated here. Yeah. Just to just to make myself abundantly clear to the person who I just banned. Coming into my chat, especially when you're someone that's literally never supported my content, and going, Streamer! Streamer! Play this other game that you hate, streamer! Streamer! Play the other game! Streamer, no! Play the other game! Don't do that. You don't yell at your television when it's playing something you don't want to watch. You just change the channel. Or maybe you're crazy and you do yell at your television when it's not playing what you want instead of changing the channel. Who am I to tell you how to live your life? But don't do it in my chat. It's just very rude. Or at the, at the very least, if you're going to yell at me to play something else, at least, like, slip me a $5 bill while you do it, and then I'll be a little bit more considerate. Kind of gold. Thanks for the prime. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hoaglandia. We the peoples. I'm doing swell, we the peoples. Terror is great. Life is fun. Nah, I wouldn't play Magic for $5, but I wouldn't ban you for asking me. least twisted fate. I think Ravenous Block kind of sucks here. Actually, I guess this kills. They play the, the deal of damage to my thing draw card cards. This is probably fine to keep, actually. I think I might actually just keep all of these. $100 for Gwent? No. Be believe it or not, when, um, 
when companies with predatory practices and gambling in their clients ask me to do sponsored segments like Raid Shadow Legends, I charge a whole lot more than I do for normal, normal sponsored segments. Come, stay a while. I bet, I bet if you asked Hat Crab, they would share. Have you interested in auto chess games like TFT? Not really, I'm in. So the the reason why um the reason why card games are my favorite my favorite style of turn-based strategy games is I really love the process of taking constructed decks and getting to tweak and tune them over the course of playing a few games with them. And auto chess games and those auto battlers, they really don't have that same type of I'm optimizing and tweaking as I go type feel to them to me. They're they're sweet games and they're they're interesting, but they just don't they just don't tickle that part of my brain that I enjoy having tickled when I play a strategy game. I rarely forget, I never forget. Deal me in. Why aren't you playing Artifact? Because Valve promised me a million dollar first place tournament and they never delivered. They stole my $250 in cards on false promises and I'm still salty about it. I think Terra needs to be bigger on Twitch. I think it just needs to exist for a longer period of time. It needs time. People people don't understand this industry and they think that just because Terra is a good product and just because it's backed by Riot Games, it's going to instantly be popular. Magic the Gatherings existed for two and a half decades. Even Hearthstone has existed for over six years at this point. These things don't just happen overnight. You just have to wait for it. Rune, Rune Terra? Rune Terra? I, I say this with the prefix that I think Rune Terra is an awesome game right now and it's my favorite card game, but Rune Terra isn't even a fully finished product really, right? Like, we're still two regions short of having all the regions in this game. Also, like, here's here's another thing. It's it's wild to me how obsessed so many people in the Rune Terra community are about the Twitch metrics. Chat, my income directly depends on Rune Terra Twitch metrics, and I'm not obsessed with it. You shouldn't be either. Your personal enjoyment of Rune Terra does not hinge at all on how many other sweaty basement dwelling nerds are watching it on Twitch. I, I promise that you can have fun and enjoy this game regardless of if there's 20 people or 20,000 people watching Terra on Twitch. The game, the game is great regardless of those metrics. Hey, I'm not sweaty. It's winter right now. Fair. Fair. That's a good, that's a good fair criticism. Hmm. <laughs> uh. Uh, we actually, they have not officially said, <laughs> whoa, Jeff, I'm in a garage. Um, they have, they have not officially said what other regions we're getting just yet. So this making this vulnerable isn't particularly exciting, but if you look at my hand right now, my hand is super stacked in terms of what my converted costs are. So like, if I'm not playing this hired gun this turn, I'm not gonna play it for like three more turns. So I might as well just get it down now. I am, I am actually in a basement. My basement is very lovely though. It's almost entirely finished and it has nine foot ceilings. Because nice houses are very cheap in the cornfields, chat. It's it's busted living in places without a lot of people in them. I'm always up for a round or two. Eyes open. A lot of stakeholders dwell on those numbers. Stakeholders are idiots. You pay first. Gotta go with the flow. Yeah. 
Mm. Okay, so that block plus this is gonna make this get off the board via pack the bags. I will pull spoilers up on stream after um, after we finish this game. That was that was one of the big selling points in the house we currently live in. Dark Rider was the nine foot ceiling to the basement. Yeah, Cursed Keeper is a piece of technology in the opponent's archetype for the sake of, um, for the sake of helping them have a better fearsome matchup. I think I have to unfortunately play into Pack the Bags here. Oh, Gangplank's leveled. Gangplank could just destroy them next turn. Next turn, I have 10 mana. I get to go Gangplank and Swain. Oh, right. This is dealing double. That's funny. Yeah, this attack would imply no pack the bags. Dongle! I'm glad to be back. I'm loving the Rune Terran BGC content. Thanks for, thanks for keeping around, Dougal. Good to see you back again. I appreciate that. Wait, they had pack and didn't play it pre-combat? What? I am so confused. Were they hoping that they would get to kill this with the pack the bags? Maybe maybe they thought I'd block their 4-3 for some reason? Your king has returned. Yeah, that was I think that was super wrong on that part. Vengeance this so I can I can swing. All right, no ruination available. This does let them level Twisted Fate, though. Looks like I'm on a hot streak. Says I don't share. Coward. You know, I wonder if I'm supposed to lead on Swain there as opposed to leading on Glory can be excuses for war. As opposed to leading on uh no, if they have a, they have another, yeah, they have a one mana spell here, so they get to gold card me. Dead in their tracks. Yeah, gonna be. There's a good chance we're dead here. That is a great draw. A good draw. Dark in the sky. By my hand, the Noxus rise. Oh, yes, she does all business. A 
This is a sick game. This deck actually seems super reasonable that we're playing. Oh no! Oh no! Brutal this much! Missed it by this much! Woof! Well, you know, that's not, that was a good game regardless, okay? Sometimes, sometimes you're the pigeon, other days you're the statue. Moments, moments before the accident. All right, let's take a look at, uh... All right, let's look at Victor, huh? The time of machines is now. A new oh, Victor has augment. Okay, that's sweet. Round start, create a hex core upgrade in hand. Levels when you've played eight plus created cards. Notably does not have to see you play those cards. So it's going to be leveling while in your deck. For hand. Begins. Behold my exquisite creation. Death Ray Mach 2. Deal 2 damage to a unit. Create a Death Ray Mach 3 in the top 3 cards of your deck. Okay. Interesting. Hexacore upgrade. Grant Victor a random keyword. I assume this means a keyword that he doesn't already have. Materials, no improvements. Humanity needs a leader of superior intellect. And one with an eye of this. Okay, Mach 3 deals 3 to a unit and costs 3. Okay, so it just keeps going up by 1. Your created cards cost less 1. Round start, create a hex core upgrade in, in hand. Huh? Cost, cost reduction is nothing to scoff at. I feel like that's a tough one to evaluate offhand. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if the, the upgrades are necessarily anything too, too exciting. Oh, it makes gems free. That's a good, that's a good observation. It makes gems free and it makes his created cards free. Okay. Iterative improvement. Pick a follower, create a copy of it in hand with plus one, plus one. I have to say, something that I love about the designs of these created cards so far is that we're, we're seeing them use this augment space and this created card space, but they're not just attaching the word random to a bunch of things, right? A lot, a lot of these created cards are effects like this, where we know what you're getting, right? So it's not just like, there, there's, there's consistency in what you're getting so you can build your decks to do what you want. Yeah, this is notably not just friendly followers. This is any follower and give it one one, which is sweet. Genius. 
I'll take it, Ledros, please. Alright, so we've got the Victors. We've got the Death Ray. We've got the Hexacore upgrade from Victor. Victor's Death Ray Mach 1. Okay, so yeah, so this is one is his champion spell. Deal one to a unit, create a death ray in the top three cards, do this, and then iterative. And then iterative improvement. Oh, is Makron only a champion spell? No, it should it should be um it should be a regular spell too. All, all champion spells are actual spells as well. They they probably should have fit it in here on on the bottom. But yeah, so yeah, that seems that seems sweet. I love I love the idea of what the augment augment mechanic is in general. It really feels like what I would like to see in Rune Terra, in that there's just a ton of different directions to build in with it. Yeah, you could build it with gems, you could build it with poros, you could build it with mushrooms, like all of these different different possibilities for different ways to build around augment. It's gonna be interesting to see which direction it shakes out in in terms of what is most competitive or least competitive. Is a great improvement about implicit synergy with augment keyword, a major improvement over nightfall slash daybreak cards. And I mean, and, and I don't, I think so. I think a lot of people have, and so like, I actually like to address that statement because I think it's actually bullshit um, to, to be blunt. Um, while there are a lot of specific synergies that pair with augment, augment is going to be very similar to daybreak in that there's gonna be an augment package that you then build around so the augment package is going to get to get paired with lots of different things you could pair the augment package with gems you could pair the augment package with poros you could pair it with mushrooms you could pair it with all all these different things in all these different things in the game and the Daybreak package does the same thing, right? Like, we've paired the Daybreak package with Swain. We've paired the Daybreak package with Orion Sol and Invoke. We've paired the Daybreak package with Shyvana. Like, there, this is just how card games work, right? Like, there's, there's this core of cards that are synergistic, that work together. And then the key to deck building is figuring out what pairs well with that synergy core. And there's lots of different ways that you can do it. Yeah, we paired Daybreak with Yasuo. Like, I think people undersell how good and flexible the Daybreak and Nightfall cards are. Like, I think, I think that I've heard other people in the community complain about about that lack of deck building nuance and i think there's way more nuance there than people give it credit for people just want to stop innovating and just like say okay we did it we're done but yeah victor seems great Excited to play some games with him. The Augment Package sounds like a lot of fun. I'd love to put it into a bunch of different things. It does It does look very nice, Rudy. Alright, SI, SI Control. Let's see how this goes. All of these cards suck. I want... We are... So, they're a control deck... So we're almost assuredly the beat down here. So I'm going to mulligan all of these interactive cards, looking for some of our proactive two drops to start. This is not amazing, but fine. Definitely better than our start. Yeah, so Daybreak and Nightfall will always need those keywords, but augments are almost always going to be paired with other augments. Like, the aug the augment package is exactly the same as Daybreak. Yeah, 
a Alec Table. Rune Tira is available on Android and iOS on mobile if you're someone that finds that more convenient as well. If you're someone that enjoys card games, this one is really, really well done. So, I'm actually just going to pass here, which means I have to burn a mana. But the upside to waiting to death sand this on their turn means that I get a Gangplank trigger this turn, which is ideal. So I want to work towards leveling this up as fast as possible when we're the beat down. And then I get to uh, drop this post, which is nice. You know, honestly, I might just pass back here. I'm not sure I really want to play out Zap into an Avalanche. Like a fish in water. I would, no, I, I would argue innuendo, the augment cards are the payoff, so it's the same, it's the same in that way too. I don't think I want to play, actually, let's play Gangplank, because Gangplank can attack into Trundle here if they have it, because Trundle's only a 4-5 now. These, these boats are going to be very good here. Really powerful threats they have to answer that also generate card advantage. Hey, chat! Second, second powder keg here means this kills Trundle. Bye, friend. Even, even if they have another Vengeance here, like, I get to hit them for four, and then I get to drop a Leviathan next turn, right? And, like, draw another, draw another swing. Did we break the format, chat? Is our deck busted? I think there's a chance our deck is busted. How interested are we in Ruinating here? Am I okay with them ruinating us? I think I'm okay with them ruinating us. Am I? Yeah, I think I am. Prepare the cargo! Prepare the cargo. King of Trolls coming through. Oh, that's all? That's your play? Deal. Oh yeah, Scorch, Scorch Earth is better. Good call. Almost, almost did that. This is much better. My friend. That was an early scoop, surely. I mean, they're going to take a ton of damage the following turn. 
Look at look at how narrow narrow and dry the daybreak package is, chat. You just see things like Leona Lucy and all the time. The package is just so stock and bland and easy to build. All these net deckers playing the auto build champion. I think the daybreak package is awesome and it goes in basically everything. It's sweet. There's tons of things you can pair it with. I'd be pretty surprised if we don't get a a go hard nerf in the in the release patch precipice. If I'm being honest, but like a single combat we're thinking of using here. Yeah, that's, that's fine, right? Scorching light. Also, can I just say, as someone who has no vested interest in the League of Legends IP and just thinks the characters are neat and wants to play a fun card game, seeing Victor... And seeing, like, the cyberpunk-style Vorthos that he is, where they're, like, upgrading humans, I cannot believe that people had a problem with the K-pop cards coming into Runeterra. Like, it's very obvious that, like, the range of things that exist in this world with that champion is huge. And, like, the fact that, like, you can't... Your, your disbelief stops at the ability for there to be a K-pop band in this universe is kind of unreal. Hey, 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 Admain, thank you for the 44 months. I appreciate you dropping off your prime again. Welcome back. Devotion through battle. One is a cool robot man, the other is fun, upbeat music. Clearly, one doesn't fit. Yeah, exactly. Pass here. If they want to burn two of my man, I think I'm okay with that. We live here. We live here. Is there more or less RNG than magic? Rune Terra, I would describe as having more player agency than magic. Your, your in-game decisions are more likely to matter in a game of Rune Terra than they are to matter in a game of Magic, in my opinion. When we get to tell Leona to get flocked here. One of, there's, there's two base reasons why Rune Terra, why I would say Rune Terra has more player agency than magic. The first is that the resource system in Rune Terra is designed in a way to encourage you to make lots of decisions. Not only do you always get a resource in Rune Terra every turn, so there's no screw or flood, but banking mana across turns is a very real decision you are frequently making. The other reason Rune Terra has more player agency than games like Magic and Hearthstone is because both players are playing every turn in Rune Terra, and both players are drawing a card every Rune and Terra, a card in Rune Terra, and both players are getting their mana back every turn in Rune Terra. So you draw twice as many cards compared to Hearthstone and Magic, and you get mana twice as often, so you're playing cards more often. Long path. 
path to get here. So I could death hand this, stunning this so they can't attack. Or I could death hand this and then scorched earth it. Has some real appeal to it too, just to get this out of the way. This this stops the most damage this turn though, so I think that's right. A uh, champ name and then a plus after it will show you the level champion text. Unfortunately, the overlay does not support it. Yeah, no problem, Andy. Think I just take this hit here? There's no reason to block into a pale cascade. Hey, hey, thanks for the prime, and, uh, and Arky. All right, you got me. I won't, I won't, I won't attack with my Leviathan this turn. Deal. Rats. That's unfortunate. I do, I do have seconds, Wayne. Yeah, we're, we're probably okay. We're just less ahead than we previously were. I'm what nightmares fear. If I kill you, I don't want you, stupid. Stupid. Missed a chance to run. This is outrage! Okay, buddy. Thank you for bringing the switch back. So opponent made a play earlier that implied they had that implied they had pale pale cascade. So I think I have to block here. I mean, blo blocking is playing around Pale Cascade there for reference. Alex, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Make it worth my while. You got it. Son of a Paint their decks with blood. 
It's rural chance of getting COVID are low. Listen, this isn't Fox fucking news. It's not a low percent chance of getting COVID in rural areas. North Dakota and South Dakota have some of the highest COVID to people living there rates of anywhere in the goddamn country right now in the United States. And fuck you if you are spreading FUD. You are literally going to get people killed spreading bullshit like that. It is not welcome in my channels. Fuck off and take a dose of reality. There are 2,500 Americans dying every day that shouldn't have to be dying. Most ICUs in the United States are going to be at or over capacity by the end of the year. And death rates are going to increase when that happens. And it's not just as simple as putting up more beds and, uh, and erecting field hospitals because we literally don't have the medical personnel to staff those new structures. Wear a mask. Take this seriously. It is. It is literally life and death. Wearing, wearing a mask isn't a debate. And if you think wearing a mask is a debate and the science is up to debate, fuck off. You're an idiot. Flarg Blarg, thanks for the follow. Blue, welcome to the channel. Wasn't bored in Zeta, I just adopted. What does FUD mean? FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. FUD. FUD is when, when someone says, well, I'm not really sure if this is true, but I heard, and then something crazy and nonsense that they're saying because they think it excuses the bullshit they're about to spread. Thanks for, thanks for the tier one sub, Blue. Is this good? I'm, I'm glad this deck is, sorry, uh, so back to the game. I'm glad this deck has been awesome today, by the way. We've gotten, we got both our boats and both our champions into play here at the end, and it's been excellent. Cor correct, Yerps. It is very frustrating and unreal. Let's play one more. This deck's been fun. This deck, this deck's been excellent. I thought we've beaten SI control. We've beaten aggro decks. It's been a huge, huge range. Yes, Dreadway, Dreadway doubles the GP explosion trigger too. Yep. I can only imagine that like that last board state there was exactly what the person who submitted this deck was envisioning when they submitted it. It was stellar. So Johnny Darius, so probably uh, Frel, Frel Overwhelm here. Thanks for, thanks for the third of a year, Blake. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Um, mm -hmm. They probably have stuff that this kills. I'm going to mulligan this entry, I think. They have other threes here to fill in the curve. You did read the stream title, right? Yeah, we're going to play some Whirling Death Vi here after we finish this match. It's my favorite deck to play in Rune Terror right now. Uh, Sunny, Sunny Swain. Uh, Targan, Targan Swain is up on my website. It plays the Daybreak Package with Leona. It's a ton of fun. I am just passing here for now. If they play something else out that this could block, I'll probably play this out. But just banking spell. I'm going to start here. Seems good. Okay, so with that, how do we feel about... I think I am just going to two for one this to keep my life total high here. I think we're going to go ahead and block this into here to gain three. And then we'll try and finish this with Death Sand. It's a little annoying, but not the end of the world. It'll still die to the follow-up death sand tier down the line. Like a fish in water. 
Nice. Okay, so we're gonna have seven total mana next turn. CA reporting in, our two highest positivity rates are in tiny counties. Yuba, population 78,000, 16.2%. 16 Sutter County, 96,000, 20%. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and in part, rural areas are getting hammered by COVID because of BS messages like the one I just went off about in chat. It was because these people think that, like, they're insulated and safe because they're not a big city, big city type situation. And, and it just really couldn't be further from the truth. All right, I think we do this in response here. Against aggressive decks, we're definitely the control deck, so I want to use these defensively as opposed to using them to hit the opponent. Do have another one, maybe? <laughs> Fair. That was a funny board. It's a heck of a heck of a stack. I think we might have lost that exchange. I mean, the people watching at home won that exchange, though, because it was sweet. Is a Gangplank turn or a Zap Deckhand turn? I think it's a Zap Deckhand turn. Yeah, that too. The mortality rates in rural hospitals are also higher because they have fewer resources. Yeah, I probably, I probably want to flock before playing my Powder Keg out. How long are the band durations? Bands are forever. Those last those last two idiots I just banned. The person the person that just posted that that uh unsavory copy pasta. I ain't, I ain't got time for people that want to sit there and think it's funny to make fun of under underrepresented in groups that get targeted by hate speech and BS constantly. This isn't this isn't 4chan. We have moderators here. I mean, to be fair to the trolls, with the election having stopped mostly, we haven't been political on stream in a long time. So there's probably we've also been picking up a lot of new followers in Rune Terra in the morning, so there's a there's a good chance that some some MAGA hat wearing folks stumbled into the channel and don't know who I am and what we stand for here. Yeah, now and now we're basically dead, right? Because it steals one to us when we die. That was tough. Yeah, I think the I think the turn um the turn they had Death Sand and Noxian Fervor to beat our Death Sand and Noxian Fervor was definitely a bit of a, a bit of a blowout. Definitely did not line up quite. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do one more. I like this deck. I'm gonna do one more before we before we switch to the my deck. Prevalence, wide board state, make make it rain or worth while. Nah, I don't think so. We played against discard Agra earlier, and you just like play to the board and match them and one for one them a bunch. House House Spider is also a real good one. You stand for belittling your ideological opponents. No, I stand for belittling fucking fascists and anti-science morons. You being you being anti-mask isn't a political ideological opinion. It's you being fucking stupid and ignorant of reality. 
And the only, the only reason it's accepted to say masks are a political statement is because not enough people have told people like that to fuck off and they're stupid. This safe space idea that all ideas are valid and are worth being heard is nonsense. Some, some ideas are just wrong and don't deserve a seat at the table. If someone tells you it's raining out and someone tells you it's sunny out, an informed observer doesn't report both stories, they stick their head out the window and they see what the weather actually is. Four three, four three is real big. Four three is really big. I guess, I guess we're gonna get to. I, I guess I really don't want to play anything here, right? Because they have, they have these. Oh, I got, I can kill it with Destiny, right? We're good. They're gonna hook the keg though, maybe. Deal. All right, it's fine. JK. Everything's gonna be all right. And then this is going to let us hook this, which is great. Opponent's champion combination here is real unique. Tr Braum, Trundle, Kalista. It's also worth noting, based on the orders of their costs, they're likely 3-2-1. We know they're not... They could be 2-2-1, two, two, but probably 3-2-1. This might be wrong. This is more resource efficient, but it could just be right to hook this and kill it. Super excited to call me a Braum. Hello, lovely wife. Gosh, Fury, Fury of the North is a card that fell off hard, huh? Just like disappeared off the face of the earth after they nerfed it. <laughs> nice, Jared. See, even, even Braum wants you to stay safe out there, chat. Don't let, don't let Braum down. Stay safe. Just gonna go ahead and call this. This might be wrong. They're on two to three Braum. It might be right to save that for the next Braum. They grow up so fast. Okay. Oh, it's a good piece of top end pickup. Not sure if this is worth doing the highlights, but if you've given any thought into separating out playlists for different archetypes, aggro, mid range, combo, control. Nah, I don't think that's super practical, Hank. I also, I also kind of do that based on my website. Like there's aggro, aggro combo, mid range control up there. So this is ephemeral. They basically just played this to fog my swing for the turn. And that's fine. Everyone's a garden. Oh, they must have they who endure, huh? We about to get we're about to get ranched by a giant endure here. I think we're about to get ranched by a giant endure. It's turn seven. Yep. 
super, super unfortunate here that I don't have any direct damage left in my hand. Maybe I should have saved that to play around this. If I would have, if I would have had direct damage, I could have damaged this now and then Scorched Earthed it. Well, the, the problem with drawing one is they get to, they get to attack. Could flock to stun, right? Nope. to just go wide here I can't I can't really beat a second endure regardless so I just want to not be dead to them going super wide across the board So we're dead. The only, the only reason to play this out is if they have another, they have another endure in hand, right? They're just souping it up. That'll, that'll do big. All right. I use, I usually like to try and end on a high note, but we've been at this one for almost two hours. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do a wrap up here. Um, all, all things considered, I know that last game we got a little bit beat up, but I think this deck is actually, actually really sweet. Um, it feels like it, it was a really good mix of game closing power with gangplank plus the boats, the tap end, and just good quality interaction here in the middle. Um, one card that especially impressed me today was Noxian Fervor. This is a card when paired with things like House Spider and Dreadway Deckhand was very, very good at helping us interact with the opponent's board when we were a control deck while also just being good bits of reach when we were ready to close the game out to jump up and smack, smack our opponent down. Um, Zap is just a really good card. Uh, honestly, the one thing that um, I think was my biggest takeaway was that I was kind of expecting this much top end to feel a little bit clunky, but it it really didn't. Um, I think from a pure competitive from a pure competitive perspective, the question you probably want to ask yourself with this deck is: Is Dreadway meaningfully better than Captain Faron? This card definitely fills a very similar role. Again, if you weren't here at the very beginning, this deck was a build-around submission. The viewer asked me to build the deck specifically with Leviathan and Dreadway, and they were both sweet, and we got to play games with them, and we won plenty of games with them, but I think if you like this kind of mid-range gangplank shell, and you're asking how to make it as competitive as possible, I think you would definitely want to test Faron in this Dreadway slot at the top end. All right, at any rate, let's go ahead and shift gears.